Hey everybody, welcome back to Painting 3D Prints for Beginners, Part 3. This video is going to be covering shading, highlighting, and all of the little details that really bring out a print. In this series, I'm showing you everything you need to know, starting from taking your print off of the print bed, all of the painting involved with all of the techniques, and then having a finished work of art to be able to be displayed on a shelf. If you're just now joining me, be sure to check out part one right there. I go over the prep of a model, taking it off the print bed, removing the supports, how to clean up your models, and then the full assembly. Check out part two of this series. I'll put it right there. And in this series, I go over everything you need to know about priming your models, and then we go into getting a base coat of your model, and then I also teach you how to do a dry brush technique. And you wanna make sure you know how to do the dry brush technique because we're gonna be using it a lot in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're ready to get started on this thing. That's such a great pun. I want you to remember this statement. The devil is in the details. What's that? The devil is in the details. Remember that. Put it in the back of your mind. Every single time you're painting a 3D print, right when you think you're almost done, I want you to think about that. Because there is always one or two little extra things that you could do to a model to really just punch it up. From turning it into a good paint job to an amazing paint job. To where people are looking at it like, oh my god, I can't believe you did that little tiny thing. Wow. That must have taken you forever. Yeah, it did. But guess what? You're commenting on it. That means you're really paying attention to all the little things that I did to this thing. If you want good paints or good paint jobs, you need to focus on that. The devil is in the details. I keep saying it because I really need you to remember that because I can't tell you how many times I've seen people do 3D prints and they did a good job on the painting. But it's just like, there's no extra little flair to it. They never really focused on those little tiny things that could have made it just like, whoa, man, I wish I could have done something like that. That's what you want. So the one thing I'll add to this is you don't want to overdo it. Wait a second. You're literally telling me the devil's in the details, add details, and now don't add too many details. Yes, exactly. Do not do that because you can actually overdo this. Just try to get that happy medium. And it's something you're going to learn over time. All right. So now, let's go focus on the details. So we have already gotten the base coat of our first dry brush done. Now we're going to be focusing on the lighting of how to get the highlights and the shading. All of this right here is going to be lighter. Then I'm going to make everything down here just a little bit darker. In the last dry brush, I added about 75% nutmeg and then I added about 25% of this spiced pumpkin orange. And what I'm going to do now is probably make it about a 50-50, if not a little more orange, because I really want to brighten this up. So if we looked at our reference sheet here of how I'm going to be making it, I want to start bringing in these really brighter oranges. And then after that, I'm going to start in with this, with the tangerine. And this is going to be a very, very, very light coat. So here we go, and I'm going to squirt some of this in here, then I'm going to squirt a little bit of this, and now I'm going to mix it up. And there we go. So this is still a brown orange, but it's brighter than what the other orange was. And it's just little by little. What we're doing is we're kind of creating layers of our coloring and brightening it up just a little bit by a little bit. So just like we did in the last video, I am going to take a paper towel, I'm going to take my model, and then I'm going to take my makeup brush and just very lightly go on those specific areas with this. So for the first time, I'm going to get my brush even more saturated than I normally would to just get that paint in the bristles. So first, I'm going to start with the shoulder. And the key here is I'm feathering it off. So I'm starting pretty bright right here. And then I'm just lightly going down.
And don't be afraid to go over some of those main areas more than once when you're doing this technique. Because I'm kind of gradating it off. So you can see it's lighter right here and it's darker here. And that's what I'm going for. So hopefully you can see how much brighter the top of his head is versus the stomach. It's just a subtle amount of how much brighter it is on the top of his head versus underneath him. Now what I'm going to do, now I'm going to take a very light dry brush with just the orange itself. All right, and you definitely want to be careful once you start making really big popping colors because a little bit can go a long way. So now you can really start to see the difference. Get his belly a little bit. And I'm going to bring a little more definition to his face. Now I am going to use this, the tangerine, and I'm going to push it just a little bit more. I want to be super careful because I do not want too much of this. So I am going to dry my brush as much as I physically can. Now I want to be very selective on where I actually apply this. Now the top of the head is definitely a spot where I'm going to do it. Now if you notice, I'm just doing this edge. Us just being selective of where we're doing it is really starting to make it have a lot of definition. So you can see that how it's lighter here, darker here. So this is really just making it come to life. Give a little bit and a few other random places that it looks just a little too dark. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And I'm only going from one direction, so it's getting edges from that side. Time for just a little bit of shading. So now I'm going to use the burnt umber with the spiced pumpkin. So I just need to stir it up a bit. All right, same thing we have been doing. And this is a darker brown, and we want to be very sparing with it. But I want to focus in the areas that are absolutely darker. Definitely not as much. Just a little bit. because I don't want it a ton, but I want to mute it down so we have a good amount of light coming off of it. So if you look, all of my light is coming from this way. All of my shading is obviously that way. The easiest way to do that is just hold it in the direction you want the light to come at, and then all of those surfaces, that's what you want to highlight. 
And if you turn it upside down or the opposite way, you can see that these are all the dark areas. So that is actually giving us a nice subtle gradation to where the light is actually hitting. So he's looking actually pretty realistic. All right, so that's everything we need to do for his skin for right now. Now, the next thing, I am wanting to do a light dry brush on the blue of the pants so we can really bring out some of these creases right here. And to do that, we're gonna use this true blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and just squirt out a little bit. All right, so here we go. Gonna get this blue saturated on my brush. Real good. And then wipe it off, wipe all the edges off. Then go back and forth. And now all I'm going to do is start dry brushing this. And you're gonna see how the pant edges really start to highlight. And you want to be careful on your edges where the skin or the rock skin is because you don't have to go fast. You can keep it very controlled. And one thing I've just realized I want to do is I actually want to do another shading of blue a little lighter to really bring out the blue here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just add a little bit of white and to the blue to brighten it up. So I'm just gonna grab some of this, move it over, add some white. And don't be afraid to mix your colors either. Making your colors lighter or darker, just adding some darker colors to it, it's always fun to experiment and really start to see what you can get out of it. Okay, so now we got a nice little highlight on the butt and a nice little highlight on the top of the pants. And I really didn't know how it was gonna turn out. And that's the beauty of it. When you're like experimenting, just don't be afraid. Tails on this model. So what are we gonna do? First, let's actually do the belt. When it comes to the belt, I wanted to go with a gloss black. I think it'd be kind of cool to like have a shiny belt on him because I'm also going to make the Fantastic Four logo this brushed steel. So it's going to be brushed silver. It'll really pop and make the model really stand out. Like it is his uniform. He literally just has a pair of shorts. Might as well make it look sweet. So all of my acrylic paints, my hobby craft paints, I actually water down in some form or fashion unless I'm dry brushing. But I do not water down the gloss paints. I'd like to keep them really shiny, and when I dilute them with water, they're not as shiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this flat brush. I'll use a very detailed brush to be able to get along the edges. So I'm going to start off with getting the edges all done. And to do that, I am going to use my handy dandy glasses. And these glasses are fantastic. I actually mentioned this in the last video but they help you zoom in at the magnification that you're in. And I mean, ooh, I don't even know if I could do it. Could I do it? See the difference? And this isn't even really accurate. But yeah, these things are great. I highly recommend every painter that's actually interested in the hobby getting a pair of these. This is my most used tool besides like all of my brushes and paints. But yeah, these are fantastic. And it's got a headlight on it. The key here when you're doing edging is try not to overload your brush. And what I mean by overload is have way too much paint on your brush than you actually need. So now I have it edged all the way around. There was some spots where I was just trying to get paint off of my brush because there's too much of a glob gone on it. But uh, I kind of thinned it out on, my, on the belt. So now I'm just going to go through and really try to thin this out because you have to be careful about your brush strokes because they will show up if you throw too much paint down.
Okay, so now we have a nice shiny belt. And we got to let that dry, and then we can move on to the actual emblem. While it's drying, I figured since I did mix up this paint, this blue paint, I'm actually going to fill in this right here. There we go. I just like that blue. It's going to really stand out. It's going to look really good. So now I have this all dry. You can see how nice and shiny that looks. It just gives it a little extra something. Uh, since he's got really not much of a uniform, the belt really uh, adds something to it. Now this is even going to make it pop even more. Brushed metal. Now these are a set of brushed metal. that I think I got them from Walmart. I might be able to put a link of these in the description. But these are fantastic. They are relatively inexpensive and they go on beautifully. So I'm just going to put a little bit because the great thing about these paints is a little bit goes a long way. So like those two little drops right there, if you see that, that that'll definitely cover that and then there'll be extra. All right, so I'm gonna just use a fine tip. Like I said, a little bit goes a long way and I just put a little bit on the tip of my brush. So that is looking pretty sweet. So there we go. There's the detail of the belt all done. So now if you look here down, he's done. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to be painting the black pockets of his mouth right there. Then I'm going to do the white of his teeth and then the whites of his eyes. So let's get to it. So if you remember, I am going to be using this gloss enamel white on his eye pupils and on his teeth. Okay, so now I'm going to let this dry. So now I'm going to add a second coat to the teeth. Now these are really thin coats. Since I'm not watering down this gloss paint, you can really see the brush strokes. So it's important to do thin coats. That way you can minimize the amount of brush strokes you see because it can be globby and it'll just dry that way and you'll see like all these bumps and ridges. So here we go. All right, now it's time for the pupils. And I am going to use this gloss black for the pupils. So now I really want to get some good definition in those teeth because right now is just super pearly whites and I can't see any separation of the lines. So I've got this black that I actually used for the inside of the cheeks. So what I'm going to do is water it down a lot. So you want this super watery to the point where like watch when it like drops like you can see it move the actual paint. And we're essentially making something called an ink wash but this is really just watered down paint. You can use an ink wash if you actually have ink washes. Um, I actually show you how to make your own ink wash. I actually made a video on how I made this bottle right here and you can see it right here but for this purpose doing what I just did will work just fine as well so what we're going to do is I'm going to take this watered down paint and really just drop it in these areas and let it just flow and I want it to fill in these cracks now you can be a little messy with this because we are going to probably have to go back and do some touch-ups but also you can use one of these cotton swabs with a point and you can kind of like suck it away and move it because we really want it to just flow in the cracks and get in there so let's go ahead and do that you want to use a very fine point brush for this and I'm going to just load it up as much as I can 
my brush and start letting it flow. Okay, so you can see it is not pretty. It's not pretty at all, but that's okay. We're gonna go back and fix it up. So let's go ahead and let that dry all the way. That's the key here. And then we will come back to it and fix this up and make it look really good. So now what we're going to do is take a detailing brush. So something very fine. I'm probably going to use this. Um, it is a 10 over zero. And I'm going to basically just paint in around the teeth. Okay, so I'm gonna use that same gloss and then just take it tooth by tooth. Okay, so there we go. We actually have it all lined out so we were just filling in really up close to the line and trying to make nice thin lines and that is it so we've got one last little thing I want to do for some more detailing well let's say two one they say the soul is in the eyes so one thing I always do is I load up my brush real good like there's a huge blob on here and then I barely touch the pupils in one corner of them on each side just to give a little bit of a highlight like that here we go again look at that didn't that just change the model it's just those little tiny things like I said the devil is in the details so now take our tangerine and squirt a little in here then Add a few, like maybe one drop. Get that nice and thin for us, but not super thin. I'm just watering it down so we don't see bar stroke. So now I'm going to take my brush and just do a little bit of edging to be able to get some more definition. You want to make sure you don't have a lot on your paintbrush. So you can see that it's just adding a little bit more flair to it. The other thing I'm going to do is just get the rim of his mouth. And then a little bit of a highlight on his nose. What I want to do now to try to block this out where I did the line, I'm gonna come across as well. There we go. Just gives a little something to him. And the last part, I'm going to highlight some random rocks. Just on the top, maybe on the arm, a little bit on the head, and maybe on the shoulder. The key here is make it random, okay? Okay, so now we have all those little extra pops in color, and he is looking pretty good. Let's do a couple on the belly too. All right, so our thing is looking pretty good. I would say he is done so let's take a look at him all right so we finished the thing and i gotta say he's pretty cool looking but now we got to move on to step four the base and this is all going to be about not accepting what you 3d print how to make it better and that's going to be in the next video